Good morning, everyone. This is Someone Unexpected, presenting a new episode of Tech Newsology. In this episode, you will learn about how engineers are developing a robotic bat, how bioengineers are modifying crops to make them salt tolerant, how string theory is finally being tested, and most importantly, how this science relates to you. Let us begin. Engineers have for a long time been confounded by the problem of creating small, robotic airplanes. The reason for this is that while rotary-driven flight is very good for large-scale aircraft, in small-scale aircraft it is very inefficient and not very maneuverable, which is why engineers are now looking at nature for inspiration. From an engineering standpoint, bats are ideal flying machines, because they are efficient, maneuverable, and simple which is why researchers at Carolina State University are trying to create a working robotic bat that uses shape memory alloy for its muscles and joints. Shape memory alloys are metal composites that can be bent and deformed, but when heated, return to their original shape. When electric current is applied to an artificial muscle that is made from shape memory alloy, the material will heat up, causing it to contract. The product of this research will be small autonomous flying machines that are maneuverable and efficient. It will have many practical uses, most notably in law enforcement and surveillance. Although 70% of the Earth's surface is covered in water, less than 1% by volume is usable for irrigation. Increasing demand for food and decreasing supply of fresh water has been more than enough incentive to galvanize scientists from around the world into finding new ways of genetically modifying crop plants to be salt tolerant and thus able to be irrigated by seawater. Researchers at Australia's University of Adelaide have recently found a new way to modify plants so that toxic sodium ions and salt are contained in the root of the plant before it gets to the xylem, removing ions from the plant's transpiration system, thus reducing the sodium ion content in the plant's shoots and leaves and increasing its salt tolerance. With this new development, we will be able to use salt water to irrigate genetically modified crops where fresh water is not available. One day, we may even be able to grow food on the open ocean, and since we will be using salt water for irrigation, we will have more fresh water to do all the important things we use fresh water to do. The unfortunate part about this is that as long as our population growth continues to increase demand for food beyond our ability to produce it, we will never solve the problem of hunger in the world. Which is why curbing population growth is more important in today's world than technological developments in our ability to produce food, even though new technology is always exciting. String theory has long been praised as a revolutionary new field in physics and as a beautiful mathematical bridge between Einstein's theory of relativity and quantum theory. If attested, string theory could become the new backbone of physics, giving us the power to predict the behavior of supermassive celestial bodies, such as black holes and supernovas, at the quantum scale. It could allow us to predict the existence of new subatomic particles that have never been created, and it could help us explain the origin of the universe in a way religion can only pretend to. Yet despite all this hype about string theory, it has never made a testable prediction. Until recently, when a group of theoretical physicists have managed to calculate the behavior of electrons in a quantum critical state of a high temperature superconductor using the assumptions of string theory. What the physicists found was that the electrons in a high temperature superconductor behaved exactly the same way at the quantum scale as they do in the entire material as if the entire material was a single atom. The results matched surprisingly well with the prediction. Although more testing is needed to determine which of the different variations of string theory are true, this kind of research could give rise to a revolution in physics similar to the discovery of relativity and quantum theory, and could lead to the development of a host of new technologies, such as quantum computing. My question for you today is this. When we are able to use science and mathematics to answer questions regarding the primacies of existence, what do you think will happen to religion? Will religion become marginalized by science? Will we discover gods? 
What do you believe will happen to religion, and why do you believe this? Leave your answers in the comments section below.